My name is Jakub, uh, and I'll tell you a little bit more about myself in a second. But first, I divide it into three parts. The, uh, part number one is about theory, the second one is about going through examples, and number three is whatever we'll manage in 90 minutes. And now, I'll be talking a lot, I'll be talking fast. If you, if you want to ask a question, you raise a hand or you throw a bottle at me, okay? I ask you to uh, start with why, because I, I want to take you quickly through three different aspects of looking on how you want to tell a story. And the, let's start with the simple one. Uh, you may be familiar with it, is the differentiation between why, how, and what. And it is very common that when we describe something or we describe what we do, we go with what. You know, I'm Jakub, I do stories. So what? It really doesn't matter, actually. It's really important um, because the audience and we as people, we actually start to understand when we understand why. When there is a speaker, you know, uh, being invited on a stage, and that speaker can have like a super duper CV, whatever, you know, but that's still what, you know? Uh, let's take a good example here, my colleague Arthur, you know? We try to invite him on a stage and I'm like, you know, this is Arthur. He comes from Moldova, he graduated marketing, he did something for five years which was like impressive, so what? It has no meaning. We have to tell the audience why is he being invited on stage, you know? Arthur is here because his mission is to change the way people communicate and this is what he's doing for the past 10 years and he will share his examples, you know, why he failed 15 times at it. Now, to give you a different example, selling potatoes is, I sell potatoes. You know, um, now going from this stage, now how do I do it? I can sell the potatoes on a street in my, in my small, I don't know, a cooking thingy where I just do the potatoes or I can have my, um, or I can have my, uh, I don't know, hipstery shop, you know. And then we go to why I do it. Now here I can say that, you know, I'm like pro-ecology because I want to promote organic food. Here it's just I sell potatoes because I sell potatoes. You know, so totally two different stories, basically. And this is why for the hipster potatoes, we usually pay three times more, even though they are the same as the non hipster potatoes. It's only because we have a, there is a different why provided to us. You know, you walk into a, a more expensive restaurant and you're like, oh, they donate to children. Yes, I'm going to pay them $20 for rice rather than one dollar because it's a totally different thing. And because we validate some things uh, because we in our head, when we understand why, we usually can uh, take it to how, what, blah, 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 and so on and so on. So this is really important. And it's also important to also when you communicate your organizations. It's very often that NGOs communicate what they do. You are much more effective if you communicate why you do it. Uh, you can be very ineffective if you do so much and people still have no idea why you do it. And then you may be like, oh, no one likes us, and so on and so on. So it's really important, especially for nonprofits, to validate lots of the things which they do through their mission and through their why. I know this is maybe not the communication, but since we are all NGOs here, this is one of the most common mistakes, which you may find that you work at some day, you are just working something, you started to promote human rights in Uzbekistan, and then you are selling potatoes in Hungary, and you're like, hmm, what did we do wrong? Uh, but maybe there is a link, or maybe there is none. Um, sometimes you may find it. If you always remember about why and you try to explain it, it really helps everybody to understand stories, whether it's a multimedia story or whether it's just a story of you, why are you here on this event. Before you start to break the rules, it's very good to know them. Because then you can answer a question, why have you decided to break the rule? Uh, because if you just break the rule without knowing them, then you are just like, mm, I don't know. So. This is very important for building stories. And this is why I want to start with theory, because this greatly helps you with any story, whether it's text, whether it's a multimedia story, a movie, or something like this, and so on and so on. If something follows those rules here, you usually end up having a good story. Now, you probably know some movies which you liked, but uh, because the story was good and everything was medium. You know, they, they didn't have enough of budget, uh, they didn't have enough of cameras, but you're like, the story was really good. That movie holds together. You can especially see it in science fiction movies, which have limited budget. If they have a good story 
and the alien looks like me in a plastic bag, you know, but the story is good, you're like, okay, you know, the story is so good. So this is why the best stories, they have usually the best scenario. And starting with this, we have three acts, and our job is to take the audience, the reader, the viewer, whatever, from act one to basically climax of act two. This is basically where we resolve. If that would be a romantic comedy, you know, climax of act two would be when they finally kiss, you know? So, we start with the beginning. Basically, we set up the scene, you know? We are in a room, you know, in the heart of uh, Budapest. Um, there is like 25 of us, each coming from different backgrounds, from um, different countries. We do this and that and that. And then we have the incident, which is the opening, you know, which is Jakub enters the room. This is the incident, which later can be very simple, you know, you trip on a banana, um, something happens, uh, and so on and so on, which basically from this incident, we go to the climax of act two. Sometimes this, we, we, we don't know, that this is the inciting moment. We discover it as we go through the story. So this is where we open it. Now, this is also very important because usually when a, a story starts, the first minutes are expected, like when we start to consume it, whatever, we give the credit to the authors to take us in. You know, a movie starts, we have no idea what's happening, where we are and so on. And we are like, okay with it. You know, we expect this. Okay, let's give them time and so on and so on. Remember about it because this is really time where you set the scene, where you put the elements, you know. It's like this bottle of water, you know, in a, uh, I don't know, in some mm, criminal drama. This may, this may help us to actually solve a murder, you know, and it's all the time on a stage. We've seen this in the act one. It was there. We may pay no attention to it in the beginning, but it's going to be actually very deciding later on. Now, when we finish the act one, is basically where our story has to run into uh, some kind of obstacles, defining moments. Here, usually, we have twist in the half of the story, you know? Is Jakub alive or not? You know? You know? He jumps into the water from the Budapest Bridge and we have no idea. Last thing we have, we have seen, he was fighting with Nino, you know? <laughs> Which is not that hard to see, actually, these days, but... Um, <laughs> This is the twist, you know, and then the story continues. It leads us to a crisis which happens just before the solution. And why I'm showing this to you? Because the easiest way to do stories is chronological. It's all usually also the most boring one. Because the chronological is usually good for us. In a way that, uh, like if you are the author, something develops over time and it's so easy to explain it uh, because it's just natural for us. For us, as creators, what we have to make sure that different puzzles of the story actually fit in. And we see that the best stories, they actually play, they, they play out differently. So, what we sometimes do is we cut it into pieces and then we take all the photos, uh, all the text, and so on. We group it together, and then we try to see, okay, this story is about um, a conflict in Ukraine. This is the climax here, you know? Where does it start? What was the inciting incident? What were the obstacles? Maybe in the setup, we actually have to start from almost here. You know, there is some disaster. Play with a little bit. This act three is basically, you know, they lived happily ever after, you know, Shrek and Fiona, they run away with children. It's just usually very, um, very small where you just add things. This is it. Now this also transfers into like, when I start to watch your story, read and so on, you gotta keep me it. This refers to non-intrusive way of consuming uh, content. By non-intrusive, I mean that there is no messengers, nothing else trying to take us out from the story. So, because uh, in our in multimedia storytelling, we actually try to have twists or obstacles in a way that they keep the reader into a story. 212 Longbow, initiate and engage. Landmark protect protocol, version five. This is a movie which portrays the future of drones. Confirmed. Your air mission will start immediately. Okay, five, five, six, break. Push 20 meters. 
have 189 vehicles on the bridge. 480 civilians at this time. No malicious intent is detected. Moonbeam copies all. Kill ROC. Proceed to waypoint. Uniform. Niner. Scope the tower. South tower. Showing minimal structural deflection. Traffic density is within predicted parameters. Copy 212. Pull out. Push southwest to vector 18. 3535. Come back. One kilometer east. Go. Lurker pattern. K5. Okay, Ethan. I'll get there as fast as I can. And my weapons free? Ah, uh, that's a negative. 212, you're in residential airspace. Lock it up. Your waypoint is left. Your line is good. Run a duck. Radar sweep. It is my opinion that this landmark is and will be secure for an extended duration. Moving to waypoint 5. Copy that. I can see many urban dwellings. Would you like me to investigate any of them further? That's a negative. Uh, watch and wait. In effect, hold tight and maintain lurker pattern. Next, get, get 2200. Okay, Ethan. 212, check in. Interrogative C Tower. Zone status over. This area remains minimally populated. 13 foot mobiles within 100 meters of the tower. Vehicular traffic. The last vehicle departed 35 minutes ago and was carrying three passengers. Moonbeam copies all drop to five meters. Neighborhood watch initiate. Two one. Uh, two one two. I've lost the comm. Run it back. Based on average stress levels in the area, criminal activity is likely within the next fifteen minutes. Two one two. We need you to pull back. Weather track and seek mission is a go and priority alpha. That's a negative. I need to stay and patrol this area. 212, override, override. Jump to 500 meters and push west. Track and seek on the coast. I'm sorry, Ethan. I cannot leave this area until the threat is neutralized. Master, on. Break, break, 212, you are not. 6-5, uh, uh, we lost another one. 212, sector A2 is down. Civilian takedown, yep. Uh, yeah, it's a third one. Okay. Was there any moment which caught your attention in the beginning? There is a moment when, when the drone says, am my weapons free? Which is like, huh? Uh, so it's, it's summer here. Because we start nicely, you know, this nice drone is helping us to keep the city all together. And uh, basically, uh, we are switching. This is the first sign. And my weapon's free. You may not notice this in the beginning. You're like, okay. But then when she starts to go into uh, this twist, which is that she starts to uh, run independently, things start to really speed up. They lead to a disaster and a crisis. Uh, you, we start to connect. Okay, she has weapons. Oh, I'm sorry, she, but the, uh, she, she had a female voice. You know, and then we are basically here. And then from the moment that she's shot down, uh, we are here, but there is one important uh, twist in the end, which is the civilian takedown. So we know that there is like a group of civilians fighting with drones. Now the last one, before we finish with the theory. Okay, it's a little bit funny after the serious drone one. Uh, it's the development of a character. The character lives in two worlds. It's the ordinary world and, and the special world. I know that there are some funny things here, like return with elixir and seizing the sword. Uh, but if you think about it, we have this ordinary person, you know? Uh, I'm gonna use Arthur one more time as an example, you know? He, there is Arthur. He lives calmly in Kitchenau in Moldova, you know? But one day he's called to adventure, you know? One day he discovers social media. And then he doesn't know what to do. You know, whether to go with it or not. And then he meets Jakub, the mentor, you know? And then the mentor takes him into the special world. And now if you think about many documentaries which you have seen, it's usually like this. This, um, Arthur, the small teacher from this village, you know, he was just running an ordinary school when he discovered tablets and he did everything he could to bring tablets to his uh, students and then boom, he's giving a TED talk uh, in San Francisco about how important is technology for education, you know. This is development of the character, basically. Character always starts with relation to us because we here live in the ordinary world. 
So we need to have that beginning, which takes us into the special world, which also shows us that this path is also for us, that this is not something superb. Now, I would give you tons of examples, but, but if you have seen any Marvel movie, they actually follow exactly, literally, that um, if you have seen the latest Spider-Man, you know, Spider-Man meets Iron Man, that's his mentor, and they cross here, you know. Now, of course, when the hero crosses on the special path, uh, he is tested, he has allies, um, she has enemies, you know, there is test different approach, sometimes they die, like Superman recently, but they reborn, as in Justice League, I mean, I'm sorry, maybe I spoiled it for some, but... <laughs> And then, hero is done, the enemy is, um, the enemy is um, taken care of, and they go back with the elixir, you know, as the solution to the problem um, in, in hand. And that is uh, something um, which you will more or less find when you talk to, your, to heroes of your story, but in documentaries, just if you open any National Geographic uh, documentary, you will see that all of the, it starts like, oh yeah. Uh, how did you, like, basically we're taken for that story. Because we, as audience, we want to relate. We can see that, oh, maybe that's me, you know? The story, basically, we have three phases. This is the production, understood as being in the field and actually developing materials. And then there is pre-production and post-production. And it's more of a film terminology, but it helps you to push you more into, into thinking. You know, pre-production is research, fundraising, uh, I don't know, setting up whoever you want to meet there. So interviews, organizing meetings. What is really important to have is the screenplay. So like the basic idea what you want to do in those three acts. So usually the actual, like this concept here is dramatically changed just after production. Because we suddenly have this great shot of fire or someone says something and you're like, now that's a good opening, you know? So it has to, you find, have to find the proper like balance between coming prepared and not feeling disappointed that so many things will happen here, which you cannot plan. Now post-production is design, story, code. Now story is first, but it has to be discussed by those three here and here. It's like, you know, oh, I'm going to Georgia and yeah, I, I don't know, they, ha they have those dances. And can we make like these dancers? So if you press the button, he will dance or can we not? And then the coder says like, no way, you know, it's, it's impossible. You know, it will take us like 10 months just to code it. So we were like, okay, then I'll just make a video. So you have to like all, the, all of those three sides have to understand each other. And we actually treat designer, story, writer, and coder as equal authors of a story. So when we send that, send it to awards or something, those three are named as equal authors. It's very important. We needed to create that culture so that reporters, they are, they are all on the same level. It's very important. And then something which deserves a, a weekly workshop is distribution. And actually, you have to really think about it before you, before you are here and before you are here. Starting with simple things. For example, uh, when you go to Facebook and you, you want to share something, it gets that Facebook cover image, yes? Now that image is very important. And you have to know that you will need it. You may want to promote that story on Instagram or social media. Uh, you need to have uh, some, you need to remember that you need this and that picture for that. Uh, and maybe you want to take them separately because you don't want to like spoil the best picture you have in a story or it tells some, some part of a story already in social media because you have to think where people are going to have first encounter with your story. And that's in most cases are going to be social media or your, I don't know, newsletter or something like this. And you already there, give them some part of a story because why else would they click? You know, unless you are on the level that everybody knows you get excited and you are only like a new movie by National Geographic and you're like, 
Okay, so you're not even like asking a question like what is it about and so on and so on. But already that part, which is promotion, getting people to intrigue to see it, tell them something without telling them something. It's actually also part of a story. Uh, it's like a trailer, you know? Uh, so it's a whole trick to, to make it cool, but not tell anything what's actually, what's actually happening in the movie. But you have to throw them a bone to get them in. Each of us spends a certain amount of time online each day, and there is so many people whose only job is to fight for that time we spend online. And you want to do it. You compete, and I compete, with everything what is happening online. That is not only just journalistic or whatever uh, online content, that's everything. Mobile apps. There are different times for releasing stories, uh, which are good, you know. You have to understand that we have two peaks, 7.15 a.m., 9 a.m., those are mobile peaks. So wake up, more or less, when you take the phone. Then uh, 8.30, 9.30, commute, mobile. So you don't release this kind of thing when you're a mobile. And then mobile is also after 7 p.m. Desktop is after 10 p.m. Let's break a little bit, because I want to just show you uh, four tools which are, allow you to tell different kind of stories or parts of the stories differently. And now this probably you have seen. You can do it easily by yourself. You just go here, old image, new image, label, boom, publish. You get an embed code and it works like this. So if you think that they're your big publishers, they are actually magicians, they're not. They you all use this. Uh, Soundside is really cool. I mean, it allows you to take, like, you see this text? So you can add sound below, uh, below the text. Story map allows you to put a uh, story on a map. So if you want to, for example, show something which was developing over time, uh, geographically, like uh, how we discovered Budapest, you can easily do it. Here you add slides like this. So and then if I go here and I just go click preview. Oh, okay, so we started our journey here. Then we had a beer here and then we had a wine here, and then we kind of lost the track of time and we ended up on a Serbian border. That's very easy done. And you can embed it, and you can play with the design. When I work personally on a story, I start to do it in, uh, in PowerPoint or Keynote. You know, this is my first, uh, like, oh, this is where I want to have video. This is actually means that I want to have a longer text here, and I want to show it. I want to have 200 characters here, uh, and then I want to go to this. Again, 200. It's very early sign and the end. And this is actually refers to types of slides which we're going to have. This is where I developed uh, the concept of the stories in PowerPoint. Just a trick, you know, which allows you to easily, easily work on it. And it really helps if you are the ones doing the production. Like you come back, you download the pictures, you throw them into PowerPoint, like if, if this starts to match together. I know that it's a lot and I would love to teach you more how to do it. Thank you. Thank you, because I owe him a joke. Thank you, bye. <laughs>